There's a really good table in Tallinn O'Connor that has the mental state exam. Have an acronym in your mind, write out the letters and then break it down for yourself. So in the, I think mental state exam, it's just good to probably familiarize, familiarize yourself with the headings at least before you start and um, go through what your registrar's written, go through what the admitting doctor's written in, in, in the whole format, uh, the A1 or the mental health assessment form, the initial assessment, the eight page document is quite useful, it gives out the headings and initially um, I would probably stick to all the headings. It's, it's kind of um, almost self-explanatory in a way. I think with the mental state exam, just like any physical exam or taking history, it's a skill that just comes over time from seeing patients and, and presenting it to registrars, consultants. I think that's ultimately how you learn how to do it. I'd say practice it every time you see a patient. Every single time you see a patient, try and even if you're not documenting it on paper, which you should, um, try and do it in your head. And it's a large part of the mental state exam is very basic. It's what do they look like? What are they behaving like? It's stuff that you'd be doing with any patient in any review subconsciously. It's just a matter of sort of recognizing that and, and doing it um, and recognizing those things that they're presenting with. There's a really good table in Tallinn O'Connor that has the mental state exam. Have an acronym in your mind, write out the letters and then break it down for yourself. Depends on the consultant and the ward as to whether you'll be expected to do MMSEs on every review and you should just check in about what they expect from you. And then in the first couple of days of the rotation, you know, do the first few with your boss to get an idea of what you're doing because it's something that you do have to practice but read through the table of the definitions of the different words and then break it down. When people sometimes think of a mental state exam, I think where people early on can get in trouble is they think it's a very, it's because it's a specific framework, they have to ask specific, more closed questions. But how you get some of the information on the mental state exam is by looking for little flags. So for example, someone might say, oh, my friends don't like me. You could just let that go and you could miss a lot of it. Whereas if you ask something like, why don't your friends like you? And they might say, they're jealous of me. You might say, why are your friends jealous of you? I might say, because they know I have these special abilities. And so you've, you've just sort of found another aspect to the mental state, grandiosity perhaps. And so that is not uncommon. The finer details of the Mental State Act um, tends to be filled with a lot of jargon and what I find is a lot of people tend to sort of use those words without really understanding what they mean. They throw around words like, oh, the patient was elevated or they have a flat affect. Those words are meaningless if you don't know what they mean. So I find, especially at the beginning, don't worry about the terminology, just write down what you see. Um, and that can be way more useful and way more beneficial in cross-sectional analysis and how that patient's progressed than to write all the fancy words like thought blocked, um, you know, what have you. So that would be a big piece of advice for, for, for a large part of the mental state exam. I think with notes is, is where like note taking is where some JMOs struggle with because they don't know what to write when someone else is interviewing a patient. So you can just write down basically what was said sort of thing and the MSC is basically your interpretation of it. And um, there's certain terms that we tend to use, not use. Um, there is a book by, a very good book for the MSC, I can't remember the name, I'll probably send it to you later. Sorry, <laughs> I can't remember. But then I think the best thing you could do, the quickest way to learn is to see your registrar and your consultant and write down MSC. Talk about what they're wearing. You know, it's, it's really important if someone is in full fluoro and has lipstick and glitter all over them. Uh, and their behaviour, are they agitated or are they really evasive? Um, and you can use your, you know, use that kind of sixth sense. Are they being genuine here or do you feel like they're being a bit superficial? And, um, you know, how reactive is their uh, facial expression and how is their mood and it's always a good way to think oh did I actually follow those thoughts were they easy to follow or were they a bit all over the place so what do I think about um, their thought form how logical 
were they? Uh, and of course the thought content, write what you hear, um, especially if you're trying to describe delusions, it's always very helpful. Uh, and you know, if someone is distractible, you know, or or if they're saying, you, you know, they're, they're hearing, hearing things or actually seeing things that uh, no one else can see. I think insight and judgment is a difficult one um, to, to kind of gauge. And you can ask things like, uh, do, you think, uh, do you think you have an illness or do you think that you're currently unwell? Do you think you need to take medication? And judgment, judgment I think is a hard one. And sometimes people say, oh, look, if someone was to say, look, let's go and um, go buy a house together, what would you say? You know, kind of giving them those kind of opportunities to say what they would do sometimes that can be used as a way to measure judgment. I feel that you can kind of develop a sense of judgment maybe through the interview and uh, things like that but um, and cognition I guess if you know if you do an MMSC that's great if you're able to just do a very brief are they orientated were, were they able to do brief things like attention and uh, you know concentration ask them to spell a word backwards count back from a hundred and take away nines or sevens or the months of the year backwards, something little like that just to make sure that, that you're not missing anything. A quick way to test for attention is to say to them, can you name the months for me in order starting with January? And so they'll say January, February, da, 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 to December. Then you say, now can you name the months for me in reverse order starting from December? And that tests the attention aspect. And you can say, can you remember five words for me? Red velvet, red velvet church, daisy, face. Face, velvet, church, daisy, red. They're the five ones, that's out of the mocker. Or you can choose lemon key ball, you can choose any kind. And just test them again in a few minutes. The key part of testing delayed recall is for you to actually remember to test it at the end. So people will often forget that. Um, and then you can just do a quick test of orientation. And that gives you a nice quick screen um, as to their cognition. So I think that's probably underdone. A lot of people will just write orientated time, place and person. And I think the bar is set pretty low for orientation really in most mental state exams. Like I said, just practice as, with as many patients as you can and do as many as you, you can. And if you do get the opportunity, show it to your registrar, show it to the consultant, say, look, am I on the right track? Is this kind of what is expected? And they'll be able to give you a lot of pointers as to what to avoid, what things you should spend more time on the mental state exam on. But, yeah. Write what you see. Absolutely. This is our physical exam equivalent. So you've got the patient in front of you. You want to communicate that uh, as though someone else was sitting there and can, can kind of get a feel for what the patient is like. I love the MNC. I think that only comes with experiences. Looking for those little flags that pop up and just asking a nice open question that can open up a whole new range of phenomenology. I find mental state exams are relatively useless sometimes if you're just doing it as a one-off. They're, they're only really helpful if you're doing it cross-sectionally. It's a useful tool just as um, most physicians do physical examinations, but in mental health it gives you an idea of what that person's presenting like now and how that's different from their baseline. But the MMSE is awesome, so uh, invest in that.